It's a sunny but really warm morning here in South Texas. It's just about nine o'clock and the temperature is already about 28 degrees. That's somewhere around 80 something Fahrenheit. And today we're supposed to be up near 38 or 39, which is over 100. So it's gonna be a warm one. So you gotta get your rides in early when it's this hot in this part of Texas. But hey, I'm not gonna complain. I've got breath in my lungs and I'm out on the bike. So let's get it. So I don't really have any specific power target or goal for this ride other than to just pedal because my body definitely isn't adapted enough to these warmer temperatures. And that's kind of a process I've found over the last several summers of riding in weather like this. It takes a little bit for your body to adapt and feel normal in the cooler, uh, in the warmer temperatures. I wish the cooler temperatures. <laughs> One of the ways I can tell I'm definitely not adapted to the heat is looking at my heart rate. And I can see even right now, I'm doing about 2.3, 2.4, yeah, somewhere around there watts per kilo. And my heart rate normally at that wattage is somewhere around 140, 135, 140 beats per minute. And it's about five to eight beats higher than that right now. So. This humidity, this heat definitely gets to you. And it, like I said, it takes a little bit for my body to adapt. So I'm just gonna pedal. Those grass puppies are trying to stay in the shade, it's so hot. Woo. So last night I was talking to some disciples about Romans chapter eight, where Paul says in verse 13, if you live according to the flesh, you'll die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you'll live. Just such a simple and profound passage not complex, but definitely hard. What's he saying there? Well, like other first century Jews, Paul knows and understands that history is headed towards a climactic day, the day of judgment, the day of the Lord. And God's gonna render to each one according to his works on that day. So he says, if you live according to the flesh, you're gonna die at the day of judgment. You're gonna perish, John 3, 16, right? But if by the spirit, such a key phrase, you put to death the deeds of your body, you're gonna live on the day of the Lord. So life and death on the day of the Lord, that's pretty clear. But what does Paul mean when he says, if you live according to the flesh, if you live by the flesh, well, elsewhere, he talks about the carnal desires, the, the passions that are deep down within us that drive us to selfishness and anger and bitterness, sexual immorality, idolatry, rage, all of these ideas, jealousy. This is what he means if you're led by those inner passions and if you order your life according to those things, you're gonna die on the day of the Lord. The reason why we know that is because God sent Jesus as the example the example on the kind of life that God approves of. 
And it was not filled with rage and sexual immorality and idolatry and anger and bitterness and jealousy. So God intends to do away with that kind of life so that perpetual well-being will result. This is what he wants. So how do we make sure we're on the right side of history on the day of the Lord? Well, Paul says, don't live according to the lusts of your flesh. Don't be driven by those kinds of passions. And he goes on to say, if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you're gonna live. So in order to live, we have to put to death those passions, those desires, those things in us. We, we don't allow them to master us. We don't allow them to drive and direct like a sail or like a rudder the direction of our lives. We let the spirit direct and guide and lead our lives. What does that look like practically? Well, it means the Holy Spirit's gonna lead us into a life that looks like Jesus, to live a life of servanthood, of humility, of laying your life down, of being loyal to God, even at your own expense, when it costs you something, when it costs you a lot, actually. This is what the Holy Spirit's gonna lead us into, a life of suffering before glory. Remember that old arcade game, Whack-A-Mole, where you picked up that little soft hammer and you had to beat the moles that kept popping out of these holes. And, and if you could do it, you get points and then, you know, it'd get faster and there'd be more moles and it would just get super hard. Sometimes I feel like that's a great comparison to living this age according to the flesh and then according to the spirit because it's like those moles that pop up every day through those holes. It's like the lust of our flesh. It's like anger and bitterness and lust and pride and all those things that we struggle with. And we're called to pick up that hammer and beat those moles into the ground. But it gets really hard. And this is why we have the Spirit. As a disciple of Jesus, as someone who says, Lord, I'm gonna commit my life to you, he goes, okay, I'm gonna give you a gift, the greatest gift ever called the Holy Spirit to help you put to death those deeds of your flesh so that on the day of the Lord, you actually receive eternal life. So friends, if you're struggling today, to live a life that looks like Jesus. Don't give up. It's not worth it. This is a matter of life and death. On the day of the Lord, you wanna hear well done, good and faithful servant, not because you were able to beat down all those moles yourself, but you picked up the hammer and you let the Holy Spirit help you to smash those moles to death, to crush the lust of your flesh. It's gonna be worth it, friends. Don't give up. The day of the Lord's really coming and God's gonna do everything he said, amen. If this was encouraging, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And like and subscribe and whew, I'm almost home, it's hot. I'll see you all in the next one.